guys make your escape. And you're just gonna sit there with the cat? Yep. Okay. Well, good morning. It's a cold morning here on Pure Joy Farms, and we are going to go see if Hamlet wants to be inseminated this morning. And thought it'd be a good opportunity to go through some morning chores, too. Along with us, we have Kiana, of course, leading the way. And Katrina is ready with the catheter and the semen to inseminate Hamlet if needed. So here we have chosen to go without boars and to go with contamination. It allows us to control the pregnancies better. So who do we have for the boar on this thing, Katrina? The one. It's a Berkshire boar from Shipley Swine. They're located in Ohio and we've ordered from them probably about four years at least. Um, they have a nice variety of boars to order from um, and we've always gone with Berkshire just because we prefer the quality of the meat. Um, they overnight ship the semen. I'll show you the vials when we get out there. I keep it warm on my chest. Uh, it's, it's cold this morning. It's below freezing and so we want to make sure the semen is staying at a temperature um, between 69 and 74 is what the goal is. Um, we found that it can be that uh, you can be pretty flexible with that range. We've yet to have a pregnancy fail. Well, I shouldn't say that. We had one fail uh, when it was very, very hot in July, and sometimes uh, the the pigs don't come into estrus. Uh, when it's excessively hot. And so we blame the outdoor temperatures for that one. So here comes Hamlet. You can tell she's in heat when she's very excited to see us in the morning. She comes running. And she will start pushing me around quite a bit when I go in the pen with her. And I'll have to sort of wrestle her around. So good morning, Hamlet. She's are extremely talkative and very close. When I mean, you got a big girl like this, So you get on the pig and they'll stand still and get in a standing heat. So the catheter goes in, you rotate it counterclockwise. an upward angle. My job is to sit here. This is why we still. keep Matt around on the farm. Yep, this is my job. And I hold the tail. And the light if it's dark. Because we do this in the middle of the night. All sorts of conditions. People thinks we're, think we're crazy. Now they can really think we're crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at one point, the catheter is gonna come to uh, a locked place where it's not gonna go much further. And um, so that's when you know you're, you're in a good spot. Um, here's our little vial of semen. Um, this you wanna take some time to put it in. It'll kind of slowly It'll, go in. It will leak a little bit, but if you can get it in slow enough, sometimes it doesn't leak much. And her body will naturally want to pull it in as well. Oh, oh. a little squirt out. Okay. 
and that's okay. This happens every time. It leaks every time, but... The Hamlet's been always really easy to read for standing heat. Um, we've got really lucky with her. Um, whoop, Hamlet. We've had some other sows who haven't been as easy as this. Have been a, you've had to do a lot more tricking and conniving with feeding them. And, um, but overall, we've had really good success with, with this technique. One of the reasons we don't have boards is you have to feed them, and when they sows are in heat, the boards will basically go through just about anything to get to them and destroy lots of things. Um, the sows themselves, when they're in heat, can be quite destructive too uh, to try to get to the boars. And when you have a pig as big as Hamlet here, um, it's more convincing her where she wants to go rather than uh, us trying to get her where we want her to go. It's, she kind of goes where she decides it. Right. Okay, so, so I'm getting to the end of the bottle here. You can see I'm getting some bubbles, air bubbles in there. And Hamlet's and, uh, also getting done with the end of her standing here. She might start moving on us soon. You get a few minutes and then it's over. Um, um, sometimes after I get off, she will just keep standing there for a while too, but... I got a helper here. Hi there, kitty. Um, so now I'm going to flush it. I take the bottle off, expand it with air, and then I do one last slow squeeze of the bottle to make sure that all of it has an opportunity to get inside. I think I just hit the end there so I don't want to... Okay, so then you just untwist it clockwise. So I typically stay here until Katrina gets out of the pen so she doesn't get chased. And she doesn't like that. So she may just stand. No, she's gonna still be interested in me. So she likes to be right here. If you're in heat, you have a sow in heat. If you stand right here and put your knee into them, they'll kind of be subdued. Or if you come back and put weight on their hips, they'll slip you up. Otherwise, they'll just chase you around everywhere. As they want. All right, Hamlet. Don't touch that. Thank you, so, That's insemination. Now, Mike and I are going to do chores, and we'll see how that goes here. But first, we'll go get food for Hamlet and feed the cheese. So, thanks, Trina. So the sheep are on self-feeding round bales right now. If you look, we've got them set up on three different hog panels made into round bale feeders. I put a whole four foot bale in those to start with. And then after they've eaten away a while, I unwind them and repack the feeders with those bales. Um, and they'll get, oh boy, what do you think, Michael? We've probably been going a month on these bales already. Um, so with three round bales out. Uh, so it goes for a long time. And the sheep barn here, we keep our higher quality alfalfa, which we give mainly for lambing in, in the winter. We also grind our own pig feed. And I'm going to give Hamlet just a little bit of food this morning. So our feed is a mixture of uh, oats and wheat and there's field peas in there, and the dark specks are buckwheat, and then there's a mineral supplement and salt that we add. This is all a, a transitional organic. There's no corn or soy. We find that the meat is better, uh, leaner, and better tasting without corn or soy in it. By grinding it all ourselves and buying it directly from 
local growers, we are able to get our costs down. Another sign of a pig in heat is they're foaming at the mouth, like he is there. And as you can see, she's more interested in me than in the feed. That's another sign they're in heat. And then we'll go out and roll in a round bale for the cows. Currently, we have three barn cats. Micah, why don't you tell us who they are? So this one is George. Uh, this one, I actually don't know that one's name right now. Uh, is that Holly? I think, yeah, I think that one's Holly. Maybe. And then this is Queen. Hi, Queen. This is Holly. Yeah. yeah. Name, I, don't I don't know. We've got a lot of cats. Aaliyah, Aaliyah right names all the animals and keeps track of that. But these guys are really nice. And of course, there's a maremma in every every shot, isn't there? <laughs> All right, on to the cows. So I just gave an update on our winter waterers here. We use the Cobet waterers. And this is a good example of a, it's about, I think about 18 this morning, something like that. And you can see a little ice forms on top, but virtually none and the sun will come out and melt that right off. And these, again, don't use uh, any electricity at all. They're geothermal energy, which is a great way of reducing costs by not paying electricity to water in our climate. So. so to feed the cows in the morning, every couple days we roll in a new round bale. They're in need of a new bale today. So we're gonna go ahead and roll them in a new bale. I found it quicker and easier just to manually roll it in by hand rather than getting the tractor out with the fork and coming to get it in so I'll tip the bale feeder up, we'll roll the bale in, flip it back down, and then the cows will be happy. So here we go. into his lean-to here to uh, store uh, 15 bales at the start of the winter which will easily last us through the winter for the sheep. The sheep are very picky about their hay and don't like it to be weathered at all. The cows, their bales can sit outside and they don't seem to really care. We do lose a little bit of the outer part of the bale but as you can see here they're already digging into the bales over there and uh, enjoying it. Over here, we'll see our sheepdog at work. The rams during breeding season often get a little bit feisty with each other and she does not like it when they fight. So right here we've got Judah, the ram from this pen, fighting through the watering cage with Skeet and with Blackie over here. So, Blackie's a boy there, and it's breeding season, and Skeet does not like that. So he's over here trying to get at him, and Kiana's trying to keep everybody separate. So she's, she's unhappy about the whole situation. So she's keeping an eye on everybody. So we have had trouble with some of our other horned rams actually breaking through the fences, which is why I put these metal panels in like this to kind of keep them more separated. Um, Blackie typically isn't uh, too feisty. 
And so as you can see here, it's Skeet trying to get at Blackie rather than Blackie trying to get at Skeet. So. Again, another waterer. This one's got a little bit out of the sun, so it's a little bit more frozen. Uh, but not bad. So, see the little pigs off there? They're looking for their breakfast this morning. So to feed the little pigs, we feed them out of the main barn. barn is an old dairy barn that we just put boards over the old thing out to the now store farm supplies in. But off the back, you feed the little pigs. And we found, we used to use the large self feeders. We found it to be much more efficient use of our feed to just feed a day's ration each day. So they're getting right now for the seven pigs they're getting two uh, these are more than five gallon pails uh, twice a day so we'll get their feed the lighting is not very big good in here but this is our Oatana grinder that we use to make the feed right here this is a finisher ration here, and this is a grower ration that I've made here. You can see we've got several other bins of already ground food that I prepared for the winter. Come on. Come on, everybody. Come on. Come on. These pigs are uh, registered purebred large black. Uh, we're going to be keeping two of these bigger girls. I think those two right there up front, maybe, for our breed stock. Because um, Hamlet's getting older and reaching the end of her breeding life. The rest of these are going to be just butcher hogs. Um, I think they're going in February, and it is into November right now. So we got a little ways to go here. These large black are a very docile, friendly breed of pigs. Very friendly, very curious, but they can't see anything. Their ears cover their eyes, don't they? Alright, and 
that's our morning to our routine here on Pure Joy Farms. So well, here it is in the evening, ready to inseminate Hamlet for the second time. And she's very talkative and very much in heat. And she'll chase us right over here. Come on, Amy. She's even foaming at the mouth. Now it's just another telltale sign. All right, round two. Uh, she has a little bit of lube here now too, so you can see that she's, yeah, it's a lot easier to go in. Um, so we used to do this three times. We would order three vials of semen and um, try to get them about eight hours spaced apart once she's in standing heat. But what we've realized is that um, two is usually uh, plenty. And so we try to try to catch it at the peak here. You want to be make sure you're far enough into the heat cycle. You want to be toward the tail end rather than the beginning. Although sometimes just being based on your schedule, sometimes it just, you have to go with what works. And like I said, we haven't had a failed attempt yet. Hamlet is a, oh, she's five years old. Um, we might be pushing, pushing her a little <laughs> beyond. Uh, where most commercial breeds would go uh, but Hamlet is a she's a cross breed she's a three different heritage breeds so she's 50% Berkshire and then she's 25% large black and 25% Tamworth and so um, like I said before we choose to go with purebred Berkshire semen so our piglets turn out to be uh, about 75% Berkshire and then just a little bit of Tamworth and large black. Now the large black comes through pretty clear in her for her size. She's probably 650 mm -hmm. not bred and then when she's bred she's probably over seven for sure. Um, that one went in a lot better a lot easier, a lot faster with less leaking. So that's good. If you notice Hamlet's ears, they're large, but they're not nearly as large as the piglets are over there. And that again shows that she's not purebred, but and they don't out the Hi Hamlet. Yeah. This is the first time the cats have been this assistive in the process. <laughs> yeah. This one dug its claws into Hamlet when it jumped up on her. And she still didn't move, so. I think we're good. Yep. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now we wait, look at the calendar. And three months, three weeks, and three days from now. And we'll know we're successful if in three weeks she doesn't go into heat. Yeah. So, you guys make your escape. <laughs> You're just going to sit there with the cat? Yep. Okay. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <Your car was. laughs>